So I am delighted on behalf of the National Trust for Historic Preservation to announce that the Nina Simone Childhood Home has been designated a national treasure. To the young, gifted, and black. Oh, what a lovely, precious tree. Coming back home to Tryon is always a pleasure, but it's especially um, great to see uh, my hometown celebrating the life of my sister. It represents a long journey from there to now. And to have a plaza here and a statue here on Main Street, Tryon, that's unheard of, or it was unheard of. But especially for the younger generation, it lets them know Nina did it, they can too. My skin is tan. Through our signature program, which is called National Treasures, we partner with communities to often remove a preservation threat and to identify solutions for advancing preservation projects. These iconic American spaces are nationally significant and they are important in helping us to understand the full history of America. Nina Simone's story is significant on a national scale because she transcended the constraints that American society placed on black female performers in the mid 20th century to become a civil rights icon and the voice of a movement. I think there are a number of different models that we're exploring. I hope that it becomes a kind of a living monument, a place where people will come to see the physical structure, but maybe also a place where people can come and work and create new work. I think you'll have people who come here who grew up locally. I think you'll have people who come from different parts of this country, and I think you'll have people who come here from different parts of the world. I think what will connect all of them is a common love of Nina Simone's music, but not just her music, but also her politics. And her politics were those that spoke to what is best about being human and about being American. Nina Simone's birthplace is special and significant on a national scale because it is where an international icon was born and raised. Um, people are familiar with Nina Simone, um, not only because of her tremendous work as a jazz musician, but she was um, iconic, eventually known as the voice of the civil rights movement. And she grew up on a hill just beyond us here um, in a really humble home in an African-American neighborhood in Tryon, North Carolina. That's where she received her classical piano training um, and where she was rooted in gospel music and how she got her start as a singer and a musician. Oh, growing up with Nina was a lot of fun. Growing up with Nina was uh, challenging uh, and a lot of fun. Now we're, she's eight years older than I, or she was eight years older than me. So she taught me how to be a young lady, different things. And of course, being a younger sister, I had a lot of comments and so forth about the boyfriends. And uh, <laughs> one of them had given her the name Nina. <laughs> Nina. I think it's a little, little girl or a pretty baby, something like that. It was a nickname that he had for her. And that's where the Nina came from. Ain't got no home, ain't got no shoes. Her grandfather, grandmother were actually in Chesney County, South Carolina. They were enslaved there. And then as her family migrated to North Carolina here in Tryon, they actually raised her in such a way that this community became a part of her. And so every part of her um, met the challenge. I ain't got no culture, 
Her mother was an evangelist. Her mother was a Methodist preacher. So her, she played the piano for her mother as she ran revivals. So she had the gospel impulse, she had the blues impulse, the jazz impulse, and she immersed all of those and did kind of a compilation and actually used those songs to give an answer um, for a question of people being treated in an inhumane and treated in, in a in way that they were treated unjustly. You don't have to live next to me. Just give me my equality. Everybody knows about Alabama. Everybody knows about Mississippi. Everybody knows about Mississippi. Go down. That's it. The part of Nina Simone that I connect to mostly is just her being her daughter, being a daughter. She loved her father. He had gone through a tremendous illness, and in her autobiography, I put a spell on you. She talks about how she just watched over him, even as a child, while her mother evangelized, worked, kept the home, but it made her. And she talks about that, how every situation that she encountered made her. So I can relate to that because I know from my childhood up to my present day, the situations and occurrences in my life made me. The music of Nina Simone touches me because Nina Simone sings from her soul. And as a recording artist, I always want to sing with, with feeling with passion, with meaning. But when I call it quits, baby, that's it. I heard her first when I was probably about four years old, and I was struck. I mean, I was stunned. I, I found my mother and said, who is that? Why is that? And the first song was the four women. My skin is black. My skin is tan. My skin is brown. <laughs> I saw four different women just by her words, by her musicality of how she sang the song, the lyrics, and that is what makes her so important and her music so important to me. We need to celebrate Nina Simone because Nina Simone is a national treasure to the world, not just the United States, not just North Carolina, but because of her activism, because of her brilliance and who she was as a person to bring certain issues at a time when people were afraid to talk. So protest songs um, were needed in her time. No one else was doing it, not, not, not the way she was doing it, sacrificing her career to inspire an entire nation of black people to be proud of who they are. That's Nina Simone. Thank God for Nina Simone. To be young, gifted, and black is where it's at. Quality public television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.